for having me. Um, I think there's a million other people <laughs> that need to be here as you say alone. Like I, um, I think there's more people deserving who are improving the world, affecting the world, impacting the world. Um, honestly, I'm just coaching basketball, you know. So um, thank you for allowing me to be here and allowing me to speak. I'm truly honored. Uh, my time at UCLA was one of the best experiences of my life. Go Bruins! Um, the education that I received, um, the basketball, the partying. I mean, like, we did it all. Um, but the most important thing coming from UCLA is the relationships that I built. I built long life friendships um, and that I'll never forget. So thank you UCLA, thank you APA. Like, that is just, it's just been a great, great ride right now. So. Um, tonight, I just want to share a couple stories with you guys. Just uh, maybe you guys can relate. Um, maybe you guys will laugh. Maybe you guys will cry. I don't know. Um, rather than just come up here and say, you know, work your ass off. Like, I, I want to. I want to just share with you some things that I've gone through, and you know, hopefully, you know, you can take something from that. Um, I wanted to first talk to you about the decision of, of coming to UCLA. So yes, you know, I did walk on. Um, but when I was recruited, a lot of the college coaches was like. You're five one and three fourths, so why would we recruit you over a five eight? So um, I got it. I understood life ain't fair, right? So <laughs> at, at uh, age of sixteen, I did get a call though. I did get a call from UCI, and the head coach called me and he's like, "Hey, he goes, you come here, Nat. He's like, you get to start, you get guaranteed minutes, and I'll let you lead the team." Huh? All right. I was like, that sounds pretty good. Um, but then my dream school, my heart was to go to UCLA. I always knew that since I was young. And literally two, two or three days later, he was right. I played well in that game. And Kathy Lele calls me and she goes, hey, um, we got a spot for you. If you want it, you got to walk on and then you got to earn your scholarship every year. I was like, all right, that sounds good too, right? <laughs> so I get up the phone and I'm like, mom, mom. I'm like, I got, I got a chance. I think I got an opportunity. And she was like, oh, that's nice, honey. Like, she didn't, she didn't. <laughs> Fred, one of my club coaches, you know him, Michelle, but I don't even want to mention who he is. Um, but he was one of our club coaches, and he called, and he's like, hey, I heard you have a tough decision. Um, you know, let me help you out. He's like, what are you thinking? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, well, he goes, go to UCI. He was like, are you crazy? He's like, you're guaranteed minutes there. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to go to UCI. And he was just like, why? He goes, you'll never set foot on that court. Now. You'll never play at UCLA. And I was like... So I was like, all right, thanks, hung up the phone. <laughs> and I literally just, as a 17 year old, I just started crying. Like, I just started crying, because I was like, man, I thought, like, one of my coaches would support my dream. And right then and there, though, I said, fuck it. I was like, I'm going to go to UCLA, and because of him, because of a non-believer, like, thank you. Thank you for not believing in me, because that just had a feel of my fire. Right, so that was why I decided to go to UCLA. So I thank that coach, which I'll never talk to again, but I want to. <laughs> um, right, okay, sorry. Um, my second story was my first week um, being an intern video as a clipper. So um, I was 33 at the time, you know, and I was working for free. And it was my first week. Like, all right, cool, you know, and as a video intern, you get to rebound, you get to pass for all the players, like pre practice, post practice. I'm running down there, like getting on the court. I'm like, cool, I get to rebound for a couple guys. So I'm sitting there rebounding, all juiced up. And, you know, it was the first week, so one of the players, I'm not going to mention who he is, because y'all know. Um, he said, uh, yeah, he goes, I see you do video. He goes, so what's the end goal here? And I was like, all right, cool. I go, my end goal is to be a coach. And he just started, he just started laughing. He's like, an NBA? I'm like, yeah, an NBA. And he just started laughing. And he's like, that's going to be challenging for you, Nat. He's like, it's going to be hard for her us to listen to. I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to say anything, right, because he's like an NBA player. So right away, I visualized this bullseye on his back. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Like, uh, you're my target, man. You're my target. So in my mind, my energy and more fuel added to the fire, like, that guy was on my target to make him believe, right? Two years fast forward. Um, this is, we're in Houston playoffs. We're up 3-1. We ended up losing that series. Um, but we were in the locker room at that time. And no, I'm sorry, we we're on the court. And I was working out Big Baby. 
aka Glenn da Davis, you guys know who he is? Yeah. Big guy, right? He would play a lot, so I had to work him out on the on the court. But after he worked out, um, we ran to the locker room, and the player that I mentioned before, he's in the locker room, and Big Davis is like, God, he's like, that. He goes, that was a hard ass workout. He's like, you killed me out there. He's like, you're gonna be a great WNBA coach. Oh. That's hard, that's fine. It's a big baby's opinion. And the player, though, he was sitting right across the locker room. He goes, he goes, that's sexist, baby. He's like, she's gonna be a great NBA coach. Yeah. And so I was like, boom. Oh. <laughs> I, said, I said, I got him. I got him. So again, I was able to change a non-believer into a believer. So that was my next, uh, I don't know, it just kind of feels good, I guess. <laughs> um, but my last story, this one's a little personal. I don't, I don't know if you guys knew me because I didn't share this about Dad, the guy that you know, I look up to. Um, but it was the summer league that uh, Tom was talking about. I was able to be the assistant coach, um, the very first assistant coach of summer league. And for some reason, that kind of drew some attention. So I just remember a reporter coming up to me, and I think they were from the New York Times. And um, yeah, so what's your end goal here? You know, you're being an assistant coach right now, what's my goal? And I said, I want to be a head coach in the NBA. Um, without hesitation, it was, it was really early uh, when I was coaching for the Clippers. And he's like, all right, cool. He's a little shocked, so like, all right, cool. So I assumed he put that in the papers. A week goes by, you know, so I get a call. It's his dad, you know, on the cell phone, so I get a call. And he just said, what the fuck is this? Right? And I'm like, hi. <laughs> And he said, what the fuck is this? And I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, now you want to be a head coach? I'm reading in this paper that now you want to be a head coach? And I said, yeah. And he's just like, not in my lifetime. And I'm like, what? He's like, not in my lifetime. And I said, dad, right away, I said, dad, I bet you a million dollars I'm going to fucking be an NBA coach. All right. And, you know, um, and I said, I got to go. And I was like, turn off the phone or whatever. Um, but the reason why I'm sharing you that story is because, you know, like Tom said, like, he was my mentor. He was my best friend since I was born. Like, he was my, my idol, my role model, the guy that I went to. He didn't believe in me. You know, like, so, I know, I'm just getting emotional, let's not talk about it, but that hurt. You know, the other guys, the player, whatever coach, that, you know, I don't bother me. But this is my dad. Um, so at that moment, that very moment, I knew like on this journey to being an NBA head coach, it's just me, right? And at the end of the day, for anyone with any career that you choose, there's no wrong career. You just have to believe in yourself, and that's it. Nobody else. The only person that needs to believe in you is you. Um, and okay, so I know later you called me the next day and you said you apologize. Uh, <laughs> But that was his initial reaction, and I knew that, and I understood that. But he knew, like, he can't stand me being mad at him. Um, but, you know, for me, try your best to, as you go on the journey, a lot of people are going to not believe you, or they're going to want to pull you down. And I'll tell you this, get rid of those people. Honestly, like, I, I seriously, my circle is so short. It's my family, and it's Michelle, and Trey. Like, I have two or three close friends that understand where I'm, try where I'm trying to go. And I've had a lot of friends literally tell me to my face, like, I'm not gonna do this. So what did I do? I just delete them. <laughs> um, I, I just swipe. I feel like now I'm being serious. Because my journey already is, is, is tough. So I don't need people around me saying like, nah, you can't do it, or they're, they're hesitating, or they have negative energy towards what I'm doing, you know? So at the end of the day, try your best to you know, keep those people close that are around you. You know, you only need one, two, or three. It doesn't matter. Um, and like I said, just believe in yourself. You're the only one. Because honestly, I think anything is possible. All so, right. Thank you. All right.